Hello and welcome to RK Grenade. And again, welcome to Have a Fiddle with Liam. Here on Have a Fiddle with Liam. We specialize in looking inside attics and playing duck hunt. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Seeing as we're currently celebrating 20 glorious years of Pokemon, I thought I'd have a fiddle with the original Game Boy. Originally dreamt up by Gunpei Yokoi whilst commuting on a train, he observed a businessman playing with a pocket calculator. Thus, the Game & Watch was born. After fantastic sales boosted the Game & Watch, he decided he wanted a handheld game console with interchangeable cartridges. The interesting thing about Nintendo is that they have always managed to be successful with their consoles, even though they were using old technology. God, I love the sight of this thing! What do you say we crack this beauty open and see what makes this thing tick? If we strip the Game Boy down, you'll notice there isn't a lot to it. The majority of the space is taken up by the battery compartment and the cartridge slot. Looking at the teeny motherboard, you'll notice that Dot Matrix Game is imprinted on the board. This was the original working title for the Game Boy. The 8-bit sharp CPU is what drives the Game Boy, along with 8 kilobytes of RAM, which can be extended up to 32 kilobytes. The sound is provided by two pulse wave generators and is played via a single speaker on the system. However, plugging headphones into the 3.5mm jack will allow the Game Boy to output in stereo. If we look at the screen, you'll recognise that level green tinge that we all grew to love. The Game Boy's screen only allowed four shades of grey. The green and black screen allowed the batteries to last a whopping 30 hours, which was amazing compared to the Game Gear's poor five hours. The screen managed a smooth 59.7 frames per second, which, when plugged into the Super Game Boy, boosted this up to 61.1. Whilst we're on subject, did you know that the Super Game Boy was pretty much a Game Boy minus the screen and the battery compartment? The original SNES couldn't actually emulate Game Boy games that well, so they just stripped a Game Boy down and threw it in a cartridge. Pretty cool, eh? The Game Boy saw a few changes in its lifetime. The Pocket, which was a slimmed down version with a black and white screen, still lacked a backlight like its big brother. Japan saw the Game Boy Light, which was a essentially a pocket with an LED backlight installed. Not them great clip-on lights or the flexible worm lights we all had lying around in a drawer. Then came along the Game Boy Color. What a change a splash of colour makes. Now boasting a colour screen and its own line of games, it could still play the original Game Boy games, adding a slight change of colour to the palette. Again, no backlight was built in. Nintendo were obsessed with keeping the Game Boy's battery life as high as possible whilst keeping it cheap to make and buy too. All in all, the Game Boy and its various relations have sold an eye-watering 118 million units worldwide. This thing absolutely trounced its competitors, the Sega Game Gear and the Atari Lynx, and went on to leave a staggering impression on the handheld console market that companies such as Sony dreams of obtaining to this day. I'll always fondly remember grabbing my Game Boy before embarking on long car journeys with my parents and playing Pokemon Blue until the sunset. Then attempting to play whilst driving home at night and catching a glimpse of the screen in streetlights as we drove past. We love you, Game Boy. Thank you for being so special to us and seeing us through our childhood. Thank you very much for watching my tech breakdown of the Nintendo Game Boy. Do you have any suggestions of anything you'd like me to break down next? Leave a comment below, and most importantly, don't forget to like and subscribe. We will see you in the next video.